Hello all, welcome to Concept E classes. In this video, we will be studying Chapter 4 of Class 8 Science, Materials, Metals and Nonmetals. So let's begin. So the entire chapter contains the following topics. The first topic is what are metals and nonmetals. We are very familiar with the materials like iron, copper, aluminium. These are metals and they are used for making tools, jewelries, engines, machines, utensils, etc. And non-metals are the materials like oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, etc. which helps in respiration or for making fertilizers, etc. So we will discuss in detail in this chapter. Then these metals can be distinguished from non-metals based on the physical properties and chemical properties. So we will study about the physical properties of metals and non-metals and also chemical properties of metals and non-metals. The final topic is use of metals and non-metals. What are metals and non-metals? As I mentioned earlier, we can define metals and non-metals based on their physical and chemical properties. So metals are the materials which are generally hard, they are very lustrous, that is they give a shiny appearance, malleable, ductile, sonorous and good conductors of heat and electricity. Such materials are called as metals. Example, iron, copper, aluminium and magnesium. And non-metals are the elements which do not exhibit these metallic characteristics. That is, non-metals are the materials which are soft, they are dull in appearance, brittle in nature, not sonorous and are very poor conductors of heat and electricity. Example, carbon, sulphur, silicon and phosphorus. Now let's study the physical properties of metals and non-metals. We studied that metals are those materials which are hard, lustrous, malleable, ductile, sonorous and good conductors of heat and electricity. Whereas non-metals are those elements which do not possess any of these metallic characteristics. So let's discuss each of these properties in detail. The first one is hard. Metals are usually hard and very solid to touch except for sodium and potassium. Mercury is the only metal in liquid state. Sodium and potassium are the exceptions where we could cut it with the help of a knife. They are very soft in nature. Whereas mercury is the only metal which is found in the liquid state at room temperature. Non-metals are soft and they are brittle in nature. That is they break down into powdery mass on tapping it with a hammer and non-metals can be found in solid state, liquid state and also gaseous state which is uh, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen etc. So the next property is lustrous. Metals are lustrous in nature that is they give a shiny like appearance. If you see the zinc metal we can find a shiny like appearance whereas non-metals are dull in nature except for Iodin. Iodin is the only non-metal which is lustrous in nature. So the third physical property of metals and non-metals is malleability. Metals are malleable in nature. Have you ever seen a blacksmith beating an iron piece and making it into a shovel or speed? And you can find that while beating the pieces change its shape. And if they are beaten even harder, we can change it into thin sheets. So this property of metals by which they can be beaten into thin sheets is called as malleability. See in this picture we can find thin sheets of metal. This property of metal is called as malleability. And we are also familiar with the aluminium foil which we use for wrapping food and also the silver foil which we use to decorate the sweets. These all are examples of the malleability in metals. But if you try beating a non-metal such as coal, what will happen? It will break into a powdery mass. So non-metals are not malleable in nature. The next physical property of metals and non-metals is ductility. Metals are ductile too. That is the property of metals by which they can be drawn into wires is called as ductility. See this is a copper wire and this is a aluminium wire and it's used for making wires and electrical appliances as well. But we have not seen a wire made of carbon or of coal. So non-metals are non-ductile in nature. 
So the fifth physical property of metals are that they are sonorous in nature. Have you ever dropped a metal coin and a piece of pencil? We can find the difference in the sound they produce. Things made of metal, they produce a ringing sound when struck hard. Those things are said to be sonorous. So metals produces a ringing sound when struck hard. Thus they are said to be sonorous in nature. For example, the bells that are used in churches or temples, they are made of metals. Have you ever seen a bell made of wood? No. Hence, non-metals are not sonorous in nature. So the last physical properties of metals and non-metals is that they are the conductors of heat and electricity. Metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. For example, if you take a metallic pan without a plastic or a wooden handle and we use it for cooking, we will get hurt as the metal conduct heat. Therefore, plastic handles protect us while handling hot things. Similarly, if you take a screwdriver, it has a plastic handle too. It is mainly used to protect ourselves from the electricity which is conducted through the metals. Whereas, non-metals are poor conductors of heat and electricity. So that is all for the physical properties of metals and non-metals. We saw that they are hard in nature, lustrous, malleable, ductile, sonorous, conductors of heat and electricity. These are the properties of metals and the non-metals are those materials which do not have any of these characteristics. Now we will study the chemical properties of metals and non-metals. What do you mean by chemical property? It is a property of a material that can be seen during or after a chemical reaction. So we will discuss about the properties of metals and non-metals when they react with oxygen, when they react with water, react with acids, then the reaction with bases as well as the displacement reactions. So let us discuss each of the chemical properties in detail. So first we will see how metals and non-metals react with oxygen. Metals and non-metals react with oxygen which is present in the air to form their respective oxides. For example, consider the phenomenon of rusting of iron and the greenish deposit on the copper. In both the process, oxide formation takes place. That is, when iron reacts easily with oxygen, a red oxide, iron oxide is formed that is called as rust. Similarly, when copper it reacts when exposed to moist air, it acquires a dull green coating. So this is due to the formation of oxides. Similarly, when we burn a magnesium ribbon air that is Mg plus oxygen, it gives 2 MgO which is magnesium dioxide is formed. The ash obtained by burning this magnesium ribbon is dissolved in water and tested for its acidic and basic nature. So we saw that when metals, when exposed in air, metal oxides are formed. Now we have to test whether these metal oxides are acidic or basic in nature. For that we use indicators such as a litmus paper. If the solution is acidic, the litmus paper turns red. And if the solution is basic in nature, the litmus paper changes its color to blue. So the ash when it is mixed with water, we can find that the red litmus paper, it turns blue, thereby indicating that the oxide of magnesium is basic in nature. In general, metals are basic in nature. So now let us see what non-metals do when they react with oxygen. Consider an example of sulphur. Sulphur reacts with oxygen to form sulphur dioxide. So when sulphur dioxide is dissolved in water, sulfurous acid is formed and this acid turns the blue litmus paper to red, thereby showing it is acidic in nature. So we can say that generally oxides of non-metals are acidic in nature. Therefore, in short, when metals and non-metals react with oxygen, they form their respective oxides and the oxides of metals are basic in nature. And the oxides of non-metals are acidic in nature. Now let's see how metals and non-metals react with water. Some metals they react with water to form metal oxides or metal hydroxides and they release hydrogen gas. For example, 
take a small beaker and fill it with water carefully cut a small piece of sodium metal and put it inside the beaker this activities are just for you to understand this should not be demonstrated by yourself your teachers will explain it if it is required okay so don't do it by yourself now as i said before we add a small sodium metal into the beaker we can see that the sodium metal reacts vigorously with water and a lot of heat is generated in the reaction so after the reaction is completed if you simply touch the beaker we can find that it is hot in nature okay that is why some metals like sodium they are stored in kerosene whereas there are other metals like iron also which reacts very slowly with water some non metals do not react with water though they are very reactive with air that is they are very reactive with air we cannot expose it to air example phosphorus phosphorus is a reactive non metal which catches fire when exposed to air so to prevent this non this non metal is stored inside water so in short how do metals react with water the metals react with water to form metal oxides or metal hydroxides and releases hydrogen gas whereas non metals they do not react with water now let's study the reaction of metals and non metals with acids so for this let's consider an experiment take some samples of metals and non metals in separate test tubes and label them as a b c d e and f so we take three metals and three non metals the metals are magnesium ribbon aluminum foil and iron fillings non metals are copper charcoal powder charcoal powder is a form of carbon and sulfur powder now with the help of a dropper add 5 ml of dilute hydrochloric acid to each test tube one by one the acid that we use here is hydrochloric acid observe the reactions carefully bring a burning matchstick near the mouth of each test tube what can we see we can see that when the matchstick is brought near the mouth of some test tubes a pop sound is heard that is when the matchstick is brought near the test tube a b and c which contained magnesium aluminum and iron the metals reacted with the acids and they produced hydrogen gas that burns with pop sound whereas when the matchstick was brought near the test tubes d e and f which contained the non metals such as copper charcoal and sulfur no reactions were seen that is the non metals do not react with acids thus the experiment shows that the metals they usually displace hydrogen from the dilute acid whereas the non metals do not do so and they do not form hydrogen gas too in short when metals react with acid they form hydrogen gas whereas non metals do not react with acids now let's study how metals and non metals react with bases similarly take a solution of sodium hydroxide in a test tube sodium hydroxide is the base that we are going to use here and we drop an aluminum foil which is a metal into it now bring a burning matchstick near the mouth of the test tube what can we see as before a pop up sound is heard the pop up sound indicates the presence of hydrogen gas this shows that the aluminum it reacts with the base to form which is base sodium hydroxide to produce hydrogen gas therefore metals reacts with base to produce hydrogen gas whereas the reaction of non metals with bases are quite complex that's because the non metals when they react with bases they form salts carbon dioxide oxides etc so it's quite complex so in short we can say that the metals when react with bases they produces hydrogen gas now we'll see about the displacement reactions for that we'll consider an experiment take five beakers fill them with 50 ml of water and label them with a b c d and e now dissolve in each beaker each of the solutions in beaker a we dissolve copper sulfate and zinc granule in beaker b copper sulfate and iron nail beaker c zinc sulfate and copper turnings beaker d iron sulfate and copper turnings beaker e zinc sulfate and iron nail and you should keep all these beakers undisturbed for some time
So here this were the beakers which we dissolved the solutions and after some time we can find that these two beakers show certain changes whereas these three beakers show no change. Why was that? Let us see. In beaker A we had copper sulphate and a zinc granule. What the zinc granule did was that it replaced the copper from copper sulphate solution. That is why the blue color of the copper sulphate it disappeared and a powdery red mass of copper is deposited at the bottom of the beaker. If you see this formula we can understand copper sulphate and zinc granule. The zinc which is present inside the copper sulphate solution it replaced this copper forming zinc sulphate and leaving copper at the bottom of the beaker. Similarly in beaker B the blue color of copper sulphate is changed to green color of ferrous sulphate. That is in the second beaker we had copper sulphate in an iron nail. So the iron which is a highly reactive material it replaced copper creating ferrous sulphate thereby turning its color to green leaving back copper at the bottom of the beaker. But we can see that there are no changes in the rest of the three beakers. Why was that? A more reactive metal it can replace a less reactive metal that is here in the case of the beaker A the zinc was more reactive than copper therefore it could replace that. But in the third beaker we had zinc sulphate and copper turnings. As compared to zinc copper was less reactive metal therefore a less reactive metal cannot replace a more reactive metal. That is why there were no displacement reactions in beaker D and E as well. That is displacement reaction is that when, when metal when it is exposed into a aqueous solution it displaces another metal from its compound. That is a more reactive metal it would replace a less reactive metal and a less reactive metal it cannot replace a more reactive metal. So we saw what are metals and non-metals, we saw the physical and chemical properties which helps us to distinguish between metals and non-metals. Now we will study the last topic of this chapter which is the uses of metals and non-metals. Metals are used for making machinery, automobiles, aeroplanes, trains, satellites, cooking utensils, water boilers etc. Uses of non-metals Non-metal such as oxygen, it is essential for our life which all living beings inhale during breathing. Non-metals such as nitrogen or phosphorus is used in fertilizers to enhance the growth of plants. Non-metal is also used in water purification process for example chlorine. Non-metal is used in purple colored solution which is applied on wounds as an antiseptic which is an iodine solution and non-metals like sulfur are also used for making crackers. So that's all for chapter 4 materials, metals and non-metals. Tune in soon for the next session. Next session would be the question and answers of this chapter. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe if you find the contents useful. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Take care. Bye-bye.